Has this ever happened to you? You're riding your bike and you realize you got a flat. You take a look at the tire and you notice that the air is not just coming out, it's being blown out under pressure. This is because the air in the tire is pressurized more than the air around us. And this is called air pressure. And we're gonna discuss this today. But first, what is air pressure? Well, simply, air pressure is the weight of the atmosphere that pushes down on Earth's surface. Remember, the atmosphere has many layers and it can get quite heavy. Air pressure is in all directions and affects the human body. For example, when people go up into space, they need to wear special pressurized suits and stay in special pressurized cabins so their bodies don't get affected. Air pressure is most noticeable when it changes and when you experience a rapid change in air pressure, like going up and down very quickly, for example, in a plane or an elevator. The way we measure air pressure is with a barometer. And I'll let this guy quickly explain. <laughs> but I will tell you, the barometer you may have in your house right now is called an aneroid barometer, and a barometer measures air pressure. So if you see something like this on your wall, it's usually with another couple of dials. One of them is a thermometer measuring temperature, and one of them is a hygrometer measuring the amount of moisture in the air. This is a barometer, and so this is a pretty standard one you'll see here. So this is an aneroid barometer. Now, there's some other barometers around as well. This is an aneroid as well, and it shows, again, atmospheric pressure. The atmosphere has weight. Air has weight. 14.7 pounds per square inch is on top of our is coming down on top of us all the time and that weight of the atmosphere pushes down on this little cell here and as it squeezes it it causes this needle to go up so it'll be higher pressure here and lower pressure now our standard barometer the way they were first invented back in 1643 is done with mercury there's the hard to find right now but what happens is is the weight of the atmosphere pushes down on a pool of mercury here and is sent up to this tube and the weight of the atmosphere because of how strong uh, how heavy the atmosphere is it would force the column of mercury to rise so the aneroid barometer is a lot more standard used now but again you have to adjust this for different elevations our pressure is lower because there's less atmosphere above us than if we were living down along the ocean and so all barometric pressure readings are adjusted to sea level so that everybody's on the same playing field weather forecasters use millibars as a unit of measure for air pressure the standard air pressure is at sea level and is 1013 millibars the Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado is only 835 millibars. The air pressure is lower. So why does air pressure change? The first reason we mention is elevation. The higher you go up into the atmosphere, the less atmosphere there is to weigh down on you. This is going to cause lower air pressure. Another thing that will affect it is temperature. The warmer air has less air pressure because when air is warmed, its molecules will move farther apart, as opposed to when air is cooled, its molecules are going to move closer together. When the air is warm, fewer molecules are pressing down in a given area. Another thing that's going to affect it is humidity. The more water vapor that's in the air, the lighter the air is, because water in the form of gas is going to be lighter, have less mass, than the other gases in the air like nitrogen and oxygen that we discussed previously. Changes in air pressure give a simple but not always accurate way of forecasting the weather. A decrease in pressure means warmer, humid, and lighter air. If the air contains water, that means eventually it's going to condense in clouds like we learnt and come down as precipitation. If there's an increase in pressure that means that cold dry and heavy air is coming there's very little water in this air which means we're probably going to have very clear sunny skies meteorologists analyze air pressure by plotting isobars which are lines connecting points with the same air pressure on a map an area with pressure increasing inwards towards the center of the circle is called a high or marked as h and when the pressure decreases towards the inside of the circle, it's called a low, marked with an L. The closer these lines are together tells you that the quicker the change is going to happen on the ground. Air pressure is also going to affect the wind. But what makes the wind blow? Air on Earth's surface will flow from a high pressure area where the molecules are close together to a low pressure area where it's more spread apart. 
The greater the air pressure difference between the two, the stronger the wind is going to be. This means on a map, if the isobars are closer together, this indicates a rapid change and stronger winds, as opposed to if the isobars were widely spaced, that means weaker winds. Remember that land and water will absorb heat differently at different rates. This island will absorb heat a lot faster than the ocean around it. Because of this, the land will heat up the air around it, making it low pressure, while the air around the water is going to be high pressure. The high pressure air from the ocean is going to blow onto the low pressure area on the land, and the hotter that the island is, the lower the pressure and the stronger the wind. Wind direction is measured with a wind vane. The tail is going to resist the wind, causing the arrow to point it to the direction where the wind is coming from. So, for example, if the wind is going from west to east, the arrow is going to point towards the west. The way we measure wind speed is with this device called an anemometer. If the earth was flat and didn't rotate, air would just go with the flow, if you know what I mean, from a high pressure area to a low pressure area. But winds don't go in straight paths because of earth's rotation. This is called the Coriolis effect, which describes the tendency of an object moving freely over Earth's surface to curve away from its path of travel. This generally is only noticeable on long distance travel, like planes and winds, that they will curve and not go straight. This means that in the northern hemisphere, when wind is going straight, it's going to curve to the right. And in the southern hemisphere, when wind is going straight, it's going to curve to the left. The greatest curves are going to happen near the north and south poles, as opposed to the least amount of curves are going to happen near the equator. The faster something goes, the more it's going to turn, and the direction it's going is not going to affect it. If it's in the northern hemisphere, it's going to always go right, and if it's in the southern hemisphere, it's always going to go left. The Coriolis effect is also going to impact air pressure. When air goes from a high pressure to a low pressure area, in the north the wind is going to blow to the right, which is counterclockwise, and in the south it's going to blow to the left, which is clockwise. Winds that blow on the surface of the earth are going to be slower than if they were much higher up. This is because there is friction between the air and the ground decreasing the Coriolis effect and causing the winds to go slower and straighter. At the top of the troposphere, which is the bottom layer of our atmosphere, but still pretty high up, cool air from the North Pole and warm air from south of that is going to combine and create a wind called a jet stream. This wind is very fast and appears as a wavy line as you can see over here, and the wind is going to go from west to east since this is the direction that Earth turns from west to east. That's all you need to know for today. Please make sure to answer the questions in the form below and hit that submit button. Next, we're going to talk about wind patterns and how they take effect on a global scale, on a continental scale, and on a local level. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.